No border wall, no DACA deal. That was President Trump's message to Democrats as Congress looks ahead to 2018. The Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program is set to expire in just a few months, and there is a showdown set up on Capitol Hill. Michael Graham, columnist for the Boston Herald and host of the Michael in the Morning podcast with us now. Michael, nice to see you as always, sir. Um, it does seem like Democrats are willing to make a deal with this, trade funding for the wall for, if not DACA citizenship, DACA amnesty. Fair deal and one that President Trump supporters should also support? Look, any deal that involves increased border security or immigration enforcement for the DACA deal is a good deal because President Trump is not going to kick these DACA kids out. You know, Americans are very clear but, if someone confused uh, Mike, on Michael, immigration. Michael, you, you, sure. you say they're not going to kick him out, but when no. he extended the DACA program and, and sort of right. kicked this to Congress, there were a lot of his supporters that were really angry about that. Well, because uh, there are people who think that there's going to be a, uh, you know, uh, trucks rolling through neighborhoods and gathering up illegal immigrants and dumping 11 million people across the border, and that's just not going to happen. And smart people like Mark Krikorian at the Center for Immigration Studies, who follows us very closely, talks about this all the time. If people like, uh, like myself and Mark, who support border security and enforcement, can get e-verify mandated for employers so that illegal immigrants when they will not be able to scam you know, the other way into jobs that americans could be doing if we can get um the end to chain migration that uh, allowed that the last would be terrorist in new york his name was Allah, i believe to uh, come in the country if we can end the idiocy of uh, random visa uh, you know uh, ex uh, being handed out based on uh, d a desire add, for diversity, add to that list add to that. that list also funding for the border wall that's where I think it gets interesting. You know, President Trump is very, very good at negotiating for more than he wants and then getting more than you expected. We saw that with the tax cut deal. Is anyone shocked that we, we didn't get a 15 percent uh, corporate income tax rate, the original uh, item that President Trump put on the table during the campaign? No, but we got 21 percent, right. which is huge. And so I, that's what I'm expecting, because Democrats know that the toxic part of this deal for President mm. Trump is the wall. It's, there's a lot of uh, a political heat well. against it. On the other hand, President Trump is with the people on ending chain migration and on diversity visas. The vast majority of Americans think right. those are idiotic ways to have yeah, no, the, come no, to your and, and, you, and you make you make a good point in terms in terms of what the polling uh, what the polling supports and what mm. President Trump's base demands, especially about funding for the wall. I want to get your thoughts, uh, at least to expand on your thoughts about the Iran protest. You wrote an article yesterday. Any protests of the violent, extremist, anti-Semitic, Islamic whack jobs of Iran are a good thing. And it comes as President Trump, for a couple of days in a row now, has tweeted about these Iranian protests and said the world is watching. He said the world's watching for any uh, human rights violations. It's Iran, so human rights violations are a daily, if not hourly, occurrence. What should the president be willing to do? This was an America first president, square America first, and intervening, perhaps, in these Iranian uh, protests. Well, uh, I thought your guest earlier who talked about the need to keep the information going out is absolutely key. It was embarrassing 24 hours ago when other cable networks had virtually ignored the Iranian protests entirely were running dumb stories about how much Coke Donald Trump drinks or whatever it is they're doing. So that's one part. But I think there's another part here that, because I'm not an expert on Iran as much as I watch American politics, what a terrible 2017 President Obama has had. And these Iranian protests are like the perfect bookend for yet another failed policy from those mm. eight years. In 2009, he had the opportunity to step up, as President Trump has done on Twitter to a small degree, and promote the Green Revolution. Instead, he, he hung back. He told us that signing the Iran deal that so many people like Israel hated would cause Iranian better behavior. Instead, they have backed mm. Hezbollah terrorists, they backed terrorists against America, and they treat their own citizens like this. Uh, you could argue that of all the people who had a bad 2017, no one had a worse 2017 mm. than the legacy of former President Barack Obama. Oh, he, he, he does those seem to enjoy his uh, year now not being president as he's uh, tra <laughs> certainly traveled the world and at times uh, broken with tradition and made his thoughts on the current president uh, known. Uh, don't have time to discuss that now, but we will uh, in the new year. Great seeing you, sir. Excellent. All Thanks so much for your time. All right.